Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now today, I've got a pretty interesting video for you guys that I think you're going to enjoy. And essentially what I'm going to be doing today is taking a look at a user created operating system. This, is, this was actually sent to me um, by another YouTuber known as Geth Commander aka Matthias. Now I'm probably pronouncing at least part of your name wrong and I'm very sorry about that, but he is actually German. Um, but he did offer to send over his newest project to me called WinXDiag. And essentially what this is, the sort of the best way that I can explain this to you guys, is if you've ever heard of the very popular tool Hiren's Boot CD, which I'm sure most of you have, um, this is essentially sort of an updated version of Hiren's Boot CD. Now Hiren's Boot CD, for those of you who aren't aware, is a very popular uh ISO image that you can download online and it contains a, a very useful set of tools that you can actually use to diagnose any PC that's having you know any sort of issue whether it's like the hard drive won't boot whether it's you're infected with malware and you can't boot into Windows whether the hard drive is failing and you want to get data off of it it contains a ton of useful tools basically everything you would need to diagnose any sort of computer problem and it does this in a couple of different ways. There's a couple of different ways you can actually run these programs. There's uh, a bunch of DOS-based programs for things like you know memory testing, and you know things like that. There's actually a, a bootable version of Windows XP that's called Mini XP that's actually contained entirely on the CD image that you know that you can boot from, and it boots into a fully fledged um, Windows XP environment. There's also a, a distribution of Linux called Gparted that is contained, or a, or sorry, Parted Magic that contains the tool Gparted, that is used for managing your hard drive partitions in a Linux uh, live CD. Now, the Mini XP environment is probably the most popular way uh, of using Hiren's Boot CD, as it contains, you know, the majority of all the programs. And you know because it's it's based on Windows XP, it's a lot easier to use than kind of you know navigating through a bunch of DOS menus. Now, what uh, Matthias's goal with WinX Diag is, or at least you know from what I can tell, is uh, to essentially create a updated version of the Hiren's Boot CD and actually base it instead of off of Windows XP. He's actually based off of Windows 10, which means that you know you're going to be able to run you know much newer software, much newer versions of the software that's, that that was included on Hirons, and it's also generally just going to be a lot more stable. As Windows XP, it's definitely you know a super old operating system now. It's about 16 years old. It's not supported by a lot of software vendors anymore. You know the uh, vast majority of them have you know moved on. Uh, to supporting Windows 7 through Windows 10 and have kind of left Windows XP in the dust. So a lot of these um, very popular uh, diagnosing tools don't really support Windows XP anymore. So you have to use older versions, which means you're, you're not really getting the full potential um, of that program that you might get with using the newer version. So that's definitely something that, you know, is a pretty cool thing with the fact that this is based off of Windows 10, as this is obviously Windows 10 is Microsoft's latest and greatest operating system and is being actively supported by all these software developers. And that's one of the things that he's put in here is, he, is he's kind of updated a, a lot of the programs that were contained on Hiren's boot CD. And he's actually added like some totally different ones that he feels uh, are going to be a lot more useful. Um, so we're gonna be you know taking a look at this in this video um, I will have to say one thing because I'm probably going to get this uh, down in the comments. Even after that, I you know say this, I'm sure there's still going to be people asking me for a download link for this. And at this time, I'm not currently able to provide one uh, because of the fact that this is still uh, in uh, development stages. And uh, Matthias has spe you know specifically asked me not to share. Uh, the download link with anybody publicly. So he is still uh, actively working on this. So if you're interested in possibly getting this when it comes out, uh, I would recommend going to follow Matthias over on his Twitter, which is at Geth Commander, which is going to be down in the video description below. So if you're interested uh, in this project, I would highly recommend you know going to like actually check him out on his Twitter page. So with all that aside, let's just actually uh, you know boot this thing up here. So what this is is a um, 
uh, pre-compiled VMware image that he has made to, you know, sort of uh, for demonstration purposes. But essentially, and I, I just got to press enter to actually boot into it here. But the uh, like, like more uh, practical use for this would actually be burning this image to a right uh, right now. The only way to do it is on a uh, USB flash drive or a dual layered DVD because the image is about five gigabytes in size. Um, now he he said that he might be able, and he is uh, you know currently working on getting that down to. Uh, under 4.7 gigs, which means that you'll be able to put it on a DVD to possibly use in you know any computer that doesn't support USB booting. So when it first boots up here, it actually uh, launches CMD and it you know runs a couple commands just to basically get the Windows desktop environment all set up for use. Um, and this is actually currently based on Windows 10 build 1511. So if I run uh, Winver here. You can see here that this is it, Microsoft Windows version 1511, copyright 2016. And this is actually the Pro N variant uh, of the Windows 10 operating system, which essentially means that there's been uh, some extra like unnecessary features, quote unquote unnecessary features, you know, uh, depending on what is you know necessary to you. But for a diagnosing environment like this, um, or a diagnostic environment like this, um, things like you know Windows Media Player and a couple of the modern UI apps, which the Pro N variant has taken out, are definitely not necessary, and they can be easily uh, replaced with a couple of other programs, which uh, Matthias has definitely done. So if we open up this uh, welcome.txt document right here, he actually explains a couple of different things. You know, he explains uh, why that he's doing this project, what the goals of this project is. And he actually also says some other features that have been taken out to get this um, installation down to just over five gigabytes. Now, that is, you know, a pretty huge thing that he's been able to actually do, you know, to get a Windows 10 installation down to just over five gigs. Now, for the 32-bit version of Windows 10, you're going to actually need a 16 gigabyte hard drive uh, minimum to install it on. Uh, for everything to actually work properly. Now, for the 64-bit, you're going to need a, a a 20 gig hard drive to install that on a computer. Now, the pretty cool thing about this is this only takes up just over five gigs. So you can put this on a USB flash drive, and this is actually based on the 64-bit version of Windows 10 Pro. As he says right down here, this architecture is AMD 64 right here. Now, Camtasia sometimes has problems with recording my mouse cursor for whatever reason. It can be pretty stupid, so I'm going to have to you know kind of highlight this here. But yes, it is full 64-bit, which just means that you're going to get even more um, application support. So things that only support 64-bit uh, processors. And you know you're gonna obviously get you know like better performance that way, which obviously for a diagnostic environment, you know you're you're getting you know like the best performance that you can get for something that's being booted off of a USB stick and eventually a CD-ROM, you know. But just the fact that it's 64-bit is definitely something that you know I I feel like needs to be said. Um, so he definitely goes through here and he you know tells you what has been taken out. So things like you know. Uh, domain join something that you know you're obviously not going to really need in an environment like this multi-user support again you know something that you're not going to need he's taken out all of the modern UI apps including the Windows Store so that definitely saves a lot of space as well he's taken out Windows update because you're not going to need to actually you know like perform any Windows updates on this uh, I, I, I assume he would just be uh, you know, like managing all of that and, you know, doing like, you know, like this might be version 1.0 and maybe version 2.0 will be based on like a whole different build, uh, maybe like a newer build of uh, Windows 10. He's taking out Internet Explorer 11 uh, and he's actually changed it out with Google Chromium, which does not work properly in this build. And obviously, you know, this is still uh, in development, so there are a couple things that aren't really going to work properly, but the main thing I've been able to find that, that doesn't work is Google. Uh, uh, Google Chrome or the Chromium project. It's the only thing that doesn't launch and this can be easily fixed It just needs to be reinstalled is is uh, all that it says so that can definitely be easily fixed 
Um, he's also taken out most fonts, uh, themes and sounds, definitely, you know, things that you're not going to need. He's taken out all of the other language packs except for the German keyboard. He's taken out printing features, legacy drivers, and even uh, Microsoft Paint and WordPad. So if we launch, if we um, launch uh, MS Paint here, you'll see that it's going to say Windows can't find that. And if we launch WordPad here, which is going to be right, you'll see that Windows isn't going to be able to find that either. Um, so, you know, and he also, of course, gives uh, some, you know, like more technical information, things about like like what uh, uh, build this is based off of, uh, of which is, again, 1511, uh, the architecture, which is, again, AMD 64, and he actually compiled this on January 23rd, 2017, which is an another thing that I want to say is that I'm very sorry for not getting to this sooner. Uh, he did send this to me at the end of January uh, be you know, uh, or, or early February uh, time frame is is one that he sent this to me, and I'm just getting around to it. It's now April second, and I'm just getting around to it. So, I'm very sorry about that, and I definitely wanted to you know do this sooner, but I was having a couple of problems with getting it set up and working. It was probably something I was doing wrong, but he was able to send over a fully compiled uh, VMware image that we're taking a look at here, and it's been you know just absolutely flawless. It works wonderfully. And I want to, you know, thank him again because he did have to actually wait about three hours to upload these images each time because apparently he doesn't have the best upload speed over in Germany. So I do want to, you know, give a huge thank you to him for, you know, doing all of this. Um, so that is essentially all of the uh, stuff that he mentions in here. Um, and, you know, you can see that he even mentions that, you know, he wanted to uh, replace the Hirons disc or the Hirons boot CD. And I, I can definitely say he's done an amazing and outstanding job uh, at doing that. And this very well could be the very next Hirons boot CD when it comes out, you know, when he actually releases this. Just because of all of these, you know, great tools that he's built into this and just how well this works. So let's just actually, you know, go through um, what is all or what all that is contained in this operating system so so up here at the top left we actually have just you know a couple of essential shortcuts to things like this pc the recycle bin your uh networked computers computer management system fi uh, configuration even the event viewer he's kind of made these things easily accessible so that you know if you're booting into this and you you know like quickly want to check some information uh, about the hardware that you're on you can do that all uh, up here very easily um and of of course we also have uh, a shortcut to the uh, chromium browser um, which of course as i said does not work but that's you know probably going to be fixed when he or you know when he actually uh, makes this public and down here is sort of the like like all the main stuff in the operating system these are all of you know your very useful tools and all your programs and all of that stuff this is where all of that is actually contained and we're just going to go through every single one of these and I'm going to kind of, you know, tell you about what they do and, you know, yeah, so let's just get started. So we're going to start with VNC Viewer here. Um, a lot of these are going to be pretty self-explanatory, so I'm probably going to say that a lot. You'll hear me say the phrase, it's pretty self-explanatory or it does what it sounds like because things like, you know, VNC Viewer or Hyper-V Manager or things like, you know, they, they do what the program uh, says that it does so VNC viewer it allows you to view um, like other computers or like other uh, devices through a VNC connection so you know that's definitely useful that that's in here so you know you say that you want it to actually uh, you know connect to like a, a, another VNC device you have that functionality in here we've also got a program called I'm, I'm not sure how it's pronounced product key Produ key I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but it's basically one of those tools like the Magical Jelly Bean, if you've ever heard of that, um, which is a, a tool that basically grabs all of the licensing information, all the product keys from uh, a bunch of different programs uh, on your computer. So even you know things like the Windows activation, maybe games that you have installed, and it basically grabs uh, the Windows license, or, or not just the Windows licensing, but just the actual key. Uh, from that so that can be very useful. I'm not going to open this because he is actually um, Using his, his personal Windows 10 Pro key to have this activated right now So I'm not going to open this because I don't want his key to be shown to everybody 
Um, and he's also asked me, you know, like n not to share this because of that reason, um, because that, you know, he is using his, his own Windows 10 licensing uh, to get this fully up and activated. Um, we've also got a shortcut to, to the hypervisor manager or the hyper v manager which is a built-in windows tool along with system information and component services these are all you know standard windows tools uh, we've got notepad plus plus in here as well so we've got this on top of the uh standard notepad application that is in windows i'm sure everybody knows what notepad plus plus and notepad 2 and all of these programs are basically just a better uh, notepad. Uh, we also have Malwarebytes Anti-Malware, which is a very nice and very useful anti-malware program that I personally use on my computer, and I've used this for years. It's you know very good. I, I would you know highly recommend this to anybody who's looking for a good anti-malware program. But we have this on here. It's obviously the uh, anti-malware free version, and it basically allows you to you know it does what it says it's going to scan for malware it's going to try to get that malware off of your hard drive so let's say that you got hit with um like some sort of malware that actually prevents you from booting into windows well you could you know boot into this and run malwarebytes anti-malware this is obviously the full version of malwarebytes anti-malware and um you basically attempt to get it uh you know removed off of your hard drive so that's very nice that that is in there. We've also got the Win32 Disk Imager in here as well, which is a, a tool that I've showcased in a couple of my videos that shows you how, or not shows you how, but it does um, copy an IMG file and allows you to, to copy that to a uh, USB drive and I believe an SD card. It even uh, supports that as well. So we've got uh, that tool in here. We've got Starwind V2V Image Converter which is another hypervisor type tool which allows you to uh, manage uh, hypervisor images and actually convert them, I, I believe, to different file formats and all of that. You know, it seems like a pretty cool program. So we've got that in here. We've got an FTP client, so we have FileZilla in here if you need to access like an FTP server um, to, you know, like uh, download some files. We've got that in here. We've got um, MPC 8C, which is Media Player Classic Home Cinema, the 64-bit uh, edition of that. Um, so we have that in here, and this obviously is the substitute for Windows Media Player that has you know been taken out because of you know that Windows 10 Pro N. So we have that. We have Get Folder Size, which is a tool that is you know pretty cool it allows you to see what folders are basically taking up the most space on your hard disk which is again pretty self-explanatory get folder size it allows you to view how big folders are um we've got net scan which is again pretty self-explanatory um allows you to to scan you know different ip addresses on your network for other devices other computers that might be on your network and you know like kind of show all of that information in a nice little graphical interface here we also have um, NTPW Edit, which I believe stands for NT Password Edit, um, which allows you to change the uh, Windows user password of your uh, user account. So say that you got locked out of your Windows account and you forgot what your password is, and you also set an administrator password and you forgot what that is. So there's no like a, like you know kind of back door into getting into your system. Um, you can use this tool right here, which basically allows you to reset uh, your Windows NT password, you know, from a different Windows installation. So you would basically have your other hard drive plugged in. You would, you know, actually uh, select the passwords file in here, and it would allow you to reset that Windows password without even having to knowing, you know, what the password is or what the administrator password is. So. Definitely useful for something like that, or, or even uh, something that I was thinking, useful for a, a tool like, say you bought like a used computer from somebody, or you bought a PC from a thrift store, and it's password protected, and, and you, you know, can't get on it. Well, you could use this tool to kind of, you know, just reset all of that password information, and then you'd be able to fully use uh, that computer. So that is pretty neat that that is in here. We've also got CD Burner XP, uh, which is a pretty nice cd burning tool that also supports dvds and also supports actually creating iso images kind of like img burn um so it has that uh, functionality in here so that is pretty nice that it is in you know this environment if you wanted to make like another iso image um you have that functionality we've also got easy bcd 
Um, this is a tool that I've personally used, but basically what this allows you to do is change your uh, Windows bootloader information. So say you were trying to like dual boot another operating system and it's not properly showing up uh, in your you know bootloader, like it's not showing up and you're not able to uh, boot to it. Well, you can use this tool. It's a very easy way of actually managing all that. And you can see that he actually has this set in here to where he can easily boot in, you know, like I guess when he's working on this, there's a couple different modes he can boot into, which is the main mode right here. There's the debug mode and then safe mode and safe mode with networking are automatically in that menu right when we turn on uh, one XDIAC. We don't have to press F8 or anything. This menu automatically comes up. It's all set up in uh, the bootloader. And he also, I think, had the timeout disabled, which you can also set in this tool to where it's not going to do anything until you actually physically hit the enter key. So it's not going to like, you know, sort of auto timeout and just boot uh, into uh, the first selected option automatically. You have to actually press the enter key for it to do that. Um, we've got sandboxy control. Sandboxy, I'm sure you all know what that is, um, is a pretty nice tool for basically creating a sandbox environment on, on your computer for, you know, running uh, like or for like running and opening files that you you know download that you're not sure if they're really safe or not um, that functionality is is in here I assume for you know if you're downloading files uh, from like this chromium web browser and, and you're not sure if they're safe or if you're um, trying to run files on your like main attached hard drive you could you know boot into here and use uh, like sandbox that way just for a, a whole extra layer uh, of protection so we've got that we've also got the remote desktop connection client which is you know nothing special it's in windows by default but he hasn't taken it out um, obviously for you know in case you needed to access a uh, remote computer you have that functionality here as well now we've got this even more tools folder in here which if you open this up you've got a, a ton of other tools let me just actually make this full screen here so we've got a ton of other tools in here. We've got uh, Crystal Disk Info, which is another tool that I've actually used on you know a ton of different computers that I've got to basically see the health um, of their hard drives and you know how that they're actually performing and if they're going to crash soon and all of that. So you can see all that information in here. Um, it's not going to find anything because there's no like physical hard drive that is attached to the system, so it's not going to find anything. Um, but that's definitely a super useful tool that he has in here. We've also got Crystal Disk and Mark, which is made by the same uh, software developer, which allows you to test the uh, read and write speeds um, of your hard drive. So that is definitely useful as well. Uh, if we go down, we've also got some uh, decrypting tools. I assume these could be useful if you got uh, infected with a tool or with a virus. Uh, such as CryptoLocker or, you know, one of those where it basically encrypts all of your files and, um, you know, you, you have, and it basically asks you, you know, basically how those viruses work is you have to, like, pay an actual ransom to these virus authors to get the actual key to get all your files back. Well, if they don't use a strong method of uh, encryption, it could be easily, you know, brute forced and, you know, like, basically you got like, gotten around. So you've got some, like, five different tools in here. That will, I guess, allow you to, you know, help with uh, decrypting files. So you've got that. We've got Mail Store, which is a, again pretty self-explanatory. It's a tool that allows you to um, archive mail messages. Um, so that's, you know, pretty nice, uh, pretty useful. We've got Process Hacker. This actually uh, reminds me of the Sys Internals tool, Process Explorer. It kind of looks the same. It's made by uh, like a whole different author, though. Um, so. You know we have that in here and basically it gives you a bird's eye view of how many processes that are running on your system even the ones that are like by like the nt authority process or, or, or the nt authority user that you wouldn't normally be able to see um if you were using task manager or a non-elevated task manager for that matter um so we've got you know all all this stuff in here that i highly recommend using tools like this rather than the windows task managers because it gives you a, a like again a bird's eye view of all the processes that are running on your system and it, it also allows you to kind of see if there's like any sort of uh like malicious processes running which wouldn't really be an issue on something like this but it's definitely still you know something that that's pretty neat and speaking of just how many processes that actually run on this he's, he's been able to definitely cut down on that to make this really non-resource intensive at all 
So if we go into performance here, you can see there's only 45 processes running and the majority of those are Windows system critical processes. You can see that when I full screen task manager, all of them fit on one page. There's like no, you know, scroll bar or, or anything like that. I believe that on like my older Windows PC, I, I had about like 90 something processes running at one time. So this is about half of that. And again, uh, the vast majority of these are processes that are, are like actually you know needed to run Windows 10 properly So that is definitely you know pretty cool that he's got that in there We've got Shadow Explorer and Shadow Explorer is basically a tool that allows you to actually recover lost uh, and overwritten files So say that you you know accidentally permanently deleted something on your computer instead of moving it to the recycle bin and um, you know, th this tool could help you in actually, uh, you know, recovering that file back. And say that you also, you know, let's say you were uh, like editing something, you know, say, say like a Word document or like a, you know, PowerPoint presentation, you know, whatever file that it may be, and you accidentally make a, a change, like let's say, you know, accidentally pressing Control A and like, you know, deleting the whole thing and saving it, which would take a lot to do, but let's say it happens, you know, by accident, just to be hypothetical. Well, this tool will actually allow you to gain or to access that previous version uh, of the file if it hasn't been overwritten yet by Windows. Um, so that is pretty useful and pretty nice that he has that in here as well. It's another phrase I feel like I've been saying a lot. We've also got ADW Cleaner, which is a tool that basically removes unnecessary like junk files and adware, you know, stuff that's not really going to harm any of the files on your computer but just kind of like all that junk and like all that adware that you know can get installed accidentally with other programs and that sort of thing so you've got that in here as well um, we've got blue screen view and this is a pretty useful tool especially for Windows 10 because if you're not aware and I'm, I'm sure most of you are but Windows 10 kind of simplified what the BSODs look like and that can be a good or bad thing depending on how that you look at it. It's a good thing because you know it, you know, kind of looks a little bit quote unquote less scary, I guess, to uh, novice users. Um, and it's sort of a bad thing because it kind of gets rid of a lot of the technical information. And you know, it's like because they would before give a bunch of information, actually explain why that the system crashed. Now it just usually gives like a little, like a small little error code you had that you then have to go look up online. Well, what Blue Screen View essentially does is kind of show all that information. So if your you know system was actually crashing and you couldn't find online through that error code why it was crashing, and you know all that stuff wasn't working, like the stuff that they said to do to fix it wasn't working, you could use this tool. To kind of um, you know, like I guess look into more detail of why that that crash happened. As it shows, you can see a bunch of information here. Um, so we've got that. We've got Combo Fix, which is a uh, tool used for again kind of getting rid of uh, viruses and malware on your system. We've got CPU Z, which is a, a tool that actually allows you to look at your CPU and processor information. We've got that in here as well. We've got NetScan again, MP, MPDW edit again. So I think these are the, are the where the actual program is contained, and this is just a, a shortcut on the uh, uh, on the actual desktop here. So this is the actual file here. Um, we've got um, a Produ key or product key once again. We have a PS Exec, which is a tool made by Sys Internals that is basically used for executing uh, remote processes through Telnet. Now, Telnet isn't really used anymore, but if you were still using it on like an older system, this could be you know pretty useful. But Putty, you know, which uses the SSH uh, protocol, would probably be you know like more used than uh, than you know this one, which because this uses Telnet, this uses SSH, which is more widely used these days at least. We also have Rkill, which is a tool used for killing uh, malicious processes out of system memory. And you would basically use this uh, from the command line, actually. You would run this process, um, and it would try to or attempt to kill any sort of uh, malicious process that it has in a list. And you would then be able to go through the further process of actually, uh, you know, removing the actual virus files from your system. So we've got that. We've got Rufus, which is a, a very useful tool that I would highly recommend if you're basically trying to burn an ISO, or not burn, I keep saying burn whenever I say that, but copying an ISO file to a 
USB drive. This is a very nice tool for doing that. It gives you a lot of options. I'll just open it up here to show you. It gives you a lot of options. I've showcased this tool in a couple of, of my different videos and it's very nice. Um, we've got Snapshot, um, which is, is a tool that basically, from what I, for, or for, from what it, it seems like, I actually had to look this one up. This one actually takes an, takes an image, like a hard drive image, and takes a, a sort of snapshot of that for, I guess, backup purposes. So you've got that in here as well. We've got Startup Monitor for monitoring startup processes. And last but not least, we have UNet Boot IN. Which is for, uh, which is short for the Universal Netboot Installer, which is a tool for doing like Netboot uh, related installation stuff. So you've got that in here as well. You've got a lot of tools in here, as you can see. So something else that he's done is he's is he's actually uh, replaced the Windows uh, 10 Start menu with a program called Start 10 by Stardock, which is a pretty nice tool. Um, which I guess is again another phrase that I feel like I've said a lot, but it's a pretty nice tool that basically makes the start menu. This is honestly what the start menu should have been like in Windows 10, um, but it kind of makes it look more like the Windows 7 start menu. You have the same functionality as the Windows 7 start menu. You've got you know folder shortcuts here. You've got your recently used programs. You've got an all programs thing that actually works and looks like an all programs menu unlike the one that's in windows 10 which just does it in alphabetical order there's no way to change that which is very annoying um we've also got a a search uh, option down here the actual search uh and like all the cortana stuff is for as far as i can tell it's been taken out of here as well as if we show this the search icon and you click on it it doesn't do anything and if we show the uh, search box, you can't actually interact with it. So, um, you know, yeah, it just seems like, you know, that's been taken out of here. Again, something you're not going to need. It's here to save space, and it's probably for the better, to be honest. This is probably a, a way better searching tool. Um, so, you know, that is definitely very nice. And that is just going to about wrap it up for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this, I guess, uh, exclusive look at WinX Diag, and I hope that you know you guys are looking forward to the final release of this as much as I am. I'm definitely very excited for this. I think this has a lot of potential um, in sort of, I guess, becoming the the next you know Hiren's Boot CD. I mean, it's definitely all here, and you know, there's just m bigger and better things you're gonna be added to it. I'm sure he's gonna plan on adding like a ton of new programs um, as you know the uh, concept kind of improves down the road so there's definitely a, a lot of potential here and i am very excited for it if you guys are again interested in seeing um or in you know being uh updated on when this possibly will come out i would highly recommend again following uh, matthias over on his twitter page which is at geth commander um that again is going to be down in the video uh, description if you're interested in going over there and following him and as always, guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to you know give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this in the near future. And as always, I will see you in the next video.